how can we make use of simple tone adjustments and turn this image into this? Let me show you with this Lightroom tutorial. As always, if you want to follow along, you can find a link to download this raw file in the description of the video. And now let's start. So this will be our starting raw file. I already have applied a little bit of cropping just to make the mountain peak look a little bigger. What we want to do in here is to add more contrast on very specific areas to make the mountain peak and the clouds stand out. First off, we want to open up the basic panel. I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This lessens the overall contrast just a little bit because I want to have some more control over it. Exposure wise, looking at this room, this might look fine, but we want to make it dark and dramatic. So the first thing I want to start with is to bring down the exposure quite a lot. As I drop the exposure, I'm always paying close attention to the histogram because we don't want to introduce underexposure. We just want to make it darker without losing details. Another way we can make this image darker is by bringing down the shadows. You can see I can bring them down all the way and still not end up with underexposure. So that is a great way to add more contrast. In fact, we can even bring down the blacks just a little bit. Let's see. So right at this point, we would end up with a little bit of underexposure. I can hold down the Alt key while I drag this slider down. You can see these tiny blue areas. These are the areas that are underexposed. These areas are not really that important. So I am okay with having a bit of an exposure there. So right away, I want to show you the difference. We started with the image on the left and you can see it looks much, much different, almost like an underexposed image. Thanks to just a bunch of tonal adjustments we did in the basic panel. Of course, we don't want this image to be too dark. So we have brought down the shadows. Next, we want to work on the highlights and the brighter areas. So let me pull up the highlights all the way. This helps tremendously with the contrast. However, we really need to be careful with the highlights because we can quickly overexpose these snow patches on the mountain. And this is something I try to avoid most of the times. So for more contrast, let's bring up the whites. Again, I'm paying very, very close attention to these problem areas, but right around here looks quite good to me. I do think I also want to push in the overall contrast just a little bit. This will further make the underexposure worse. But as I said, these areas are not that important. So that's okay. Now this looks much better than the raw file before. I do think I want to introduce some more gold in our light. So I also want to adjust the white balance. For the golden hour light, I'm going to bring up the temperature. So let's raise it quite a bit here. And I do think I'm going to bring up the tint as well, just a little bit. And I do want to add a bit of texture, which will make the image look sharper. At the same time, I want to bring down the clarity to kind of add some dreamy effect on top. And let's maybe also bring down the dehaze. In this case, bringing down the dehaze, it makes the whole image brighter. If you plan on doing that, always keep that in mind. All right, so I'm not going to touch the vibrance or saturation. So we're pretty much done with the basic adjustments. And again, let's take a look at before we are quick with just a bunch of tonal adjustments, we can make the whole image look a lot more different and dramatic. And of course, we can continue using stuff like highlights, shadows, whites and blacks more locally with the help of masks. And that's exactly what we want to do. Let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. The first thing with the masking I usually like to do is to work on the sky because these areas usually are quite easy to target. In this case, we have a blue sky with a bunch of clouds. So we can use a color range mask and we can click somewhere in here and we get a very, very good selection. What I want to do with this selection is to bring down the exposure even further, making the sky even darker. And thus we're adding more contrast and make this bright mountain peak stand out a little more. So I'm going to drop it quite a bit. And I do want to introduce more saturation to this area. So we get some blue tones in here. Let's go with something like this for the moment. Okay. Now these color range masks can introduce some fine white light around 
around edges, like in this case. If you see an edge like this, you might want to tone down the adjustments a little bit. I think for the purpose of this video, I'm just going with it for now. The sky is looking pretty good, but I also want to add a linear gradient on the very top of it, just covering pretty much the right side like this. And here I want to bring down the blacks. This will further make the sky darker and it will also create some kind of vignetting effect leading the viewer's eye more towards the peak in the center, which is exactly what we want. But we can also use a linear gradient covering the foreground or let's say the shadows of the foreground. And what I want to do in here is I also want to make it darker, but I don't want to use exposure or shadows or blacks because then we would end up with underexposure. Instead, I want to drop the whites. This will make the area darker without heavily underexposing the area. So that's looking pretty good so far. I do think I also want to introduce some light coming in from the right side. So let me create one big fat radial gradient like this. I'm going to slightly tilt it and I'm going to place the center of this radial gradient outside of the image. With this radial gradient, I want to introduce light by bringing up the exposure. I also want to bring up the whites. And for some extra glow, I always like to bring up the blacks. And let's carefully drop the dehaze. All right, that looks great. We can work on the glow some more using another second radial gradient. However, this time I'm making it a little smaller and I'm just covering this bright spot right here on the mountain. Again, let's tilt it a bit. Actually, I don't want to add glow, but I want to make the highlights more visible in here. So what I'm going to do is to bring up the whites and this will just add more contrast to this spot, which I think looks great. I can also bring up the highlights. Okay. Now there's one more thing I want to change and that's the brightness of this cloud right here. I want to make it brighter to make it stand out a little more and add more contrast to this image, separating the cloud a little more from the blue sky in the back. So we're going to use a new mask and we're going to use a luminance range mask. With the luminance range mask active and this eyedropper hovering over the cloud, I'm just clicking right in here. This is selecting way too much as you can see. So I want to adjust the luminance range a bit. I want to filter out more of the darker parts. So I'm going to bring up this point a bit, just like that. And I'm going to make the edge a little softer. So I'm going to bring this point up as well. Okay, this is looking like a pretty good selection. Still, we need to adjust it some more. I'm going to say subtract and I'm choosing a linear gradient, taking away a part from here, from the right side. And we wanna subtract another linear gradient coming up from the top like this. Now we have pretty much only in the cloud selected. That's exactly what we want. Now to make it pop a little more, I'm going to bring up the whites. And I also want to bring up the clarity. And at this point, I do want to introduce some more extra warmth to this cloud. So I'm going to introduce some temperature, just a little bit. And I'm also going to decrease the tint to prevent any weird magenta color cast to kick in in this area. Wonderful, that looks great. Now that's it for the masking. Let me show you what a difference this makes. And this was our image after just a bunch of base adjustments. And here we have it with the masking stuff applied on top. Again, we pretty much only made use of local tonal adjustments working on the brightness and darkness of areas. So now that we're done with the masking, let's also do some color grading because we want to turn this more into a golden hour scene. So let's go down into the color mixer and I want to work on the hue first. Here I want to slightly bring down the orange hue, giving the mountain face more of a red-ish color tone. I also want to slightly bring down the blue hue, bringing the sky a bit more into the aqua color range, but just a bit. And I want to head into the saturation tab. I want to bring up the orange saturation to make that mountain peak glow a little more. And I want to bring down yellow because yellow will affect the snow the most. And I want to keep the snow pretty much white. 
So that looks good to me. I'm also going to bring down the blue saturation just a little bit. All right, then let's head into the luminance tab and just bring down the blue luminance a little more to make the sky a bit darker. Wonderful. The image still lacks a little bit of warmth and we can change that in the color grading panel with some split toning. So here we want to target the highlights first and of course we want to make the highlights warmer. So we are going to set up the hue in such way. Let's see, this is looking like a pretty good color tone. And now let's bring up the saturation and I'm going to use a lot of saturation to give it this heavily color graded look. Wow, wonderful. Let's also use the midtones. I'm again using a warm color tone for the midtones somewhere around here. And I'm going to slightly bring up the saturation here. I don't want to overdo it. Just want to introduce a little bit more here. Perfect. And of course, we can also head down into the calibration tab for some more color grading here. I'm going to start with the blue primary hue, bringing it down very slightly. This helps making the mountain peak look a little more red-ish, which I think looks great. And I am going to bring up the saturation here. Let's also bring up the saturation of green and red. Perfect. This looks great. Now the only thing left to do is the sharpening. So let's head into the details tab and bring down the radius, increase the details, add masking while holding down the alt key. So we can see where the sharpening is applied and we only want to have it on the mount like this. And then bring up the amount of sharpening. Wonderful. Now there are a few sensor spots throughout the image which we can clean up in Lightroom as well. So let's click on remove. And I already clicked on visualize spots which should make it easier to see those sensor spots and I'm just going to brush over them. Okay, and that's it. Here we have the finished image. I hope this little Lightroom tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions or have anything to add to this video, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.